Hey, uh, good morning. This is Jay. And recently we've talked an awful lot about um, cutting trees down. So let's start talking about how to put them right back in the ground. Um, these seedlings that you see in front of you here are uh, are koa, uh, koa seedlings. I've probably planted two or three hundred koa trees over the last couple of years um, out in the uh, acreage behind my place uh, with the idea that I was going to take on a blend of food forestry and to some degree agroforestry. Here in here in Hawaii we're very fortunate to have a tree such as koa which is extremely easy to propagate and very fast growing and as, as a potential lumber source um, a very high value add. It also does really well in biochar and it grows really fast as you're going to get to see. Um, there are some problems with the plant um, it is, is subject to a couple of different diseases in my area. It's mostly like a root knot nematode that'll get it. But it seems like uh, that has been confined to various varieties. It's, there's a lot of variability in the koa tree itself. And if you get your seeds from trees that seem unaffected and you pay good attention to maintaining your soil health, I don't think you're going to really have too much trouble. I, I certainly haven't. Um, these seedlings here, to show you how fast these grow are not quite a month old planted from seeds the seeds look like this um, they they much resemble a watermelon seed and they have a really hard seed coat and they're pretty stable there are some pests that feed on them uh, there'll be some like little small mealy worms in them on occasion maybe 50 percent of the seeds um, but it's really no matter I mean the key to planting koa is you plant a lot of seeds and what comes up is what you get uh, you figure there's going to be quite a bit of mortality in the plants because you really want to outplant them early. I I wouldn't wait too much longer than than this kind of height um, to outplant them because they have a tendency to get root bound in a, in a pot very rapidly. They send out a very aggressive taproot system and if, unless that taproot system can get established in real soil um, the tree will never really flourish. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Figure you're going to lose four out of five of them, so plant a lot. Um, the seeds are easy. You scarify them, you take them, and you nick the edge of that seed just barely to expose the embryo with a nail clipper. Stick them in a peat pot like that, and a month later they're going to look like this. Um, let me show you what they look like um, a year and a half later. Okay, well, this koa tree here um, is about a year and a half old. And, uh, well, it's a little surprising. All right, just give you a sense of scale. I'm 6'3", so this is about 15 feet tall in a year and a half. Uh, they will, they will kind of languish for about the first year um, once they get their root structure in um, and they get their uh, uh, symbiotic fungal organisms that are the nitrogen fixers that Koa uh, uh, supports oh boy howdy like off they go so don't uh, uh, be be prepared a lot of tree really quick let me show you one that's two and a half years old now okay so this seems to be the uh, chickens favorite koa which probably helps its growth rate but it's uh, about two and a half years old if you look down here at the butt you probably can't get a good sense of scale but in two and a half years you have about two and a half inches at the butt and I would, oh, uh, let's see, estimate, it's got to be all of 16 feet high and a pretty significant crown. Um, and it's really just now starting to really take off. So I would encourage you, um, if you're interested in reforestry, boy, you know, it's going to be awfully hard to beat koa trees. Um, I'm of the opinion at this point, part of the reason that our native ohia forests are as degraded as they are, that... Uh, Ohia would be the second wave of colonization in trees in the forest. Now, of course, in Hawaii, because we've lost so much of our bird population, the ability of koa seeds to migrate within the ecosystem has been greatly diminished. But, you know, there's a flip side to owning that little Toyota pickup, because you can get those seeds and you can move them around the island pretty quick. Uh, like I say out here on my three acres, I've probably planted 250 or 300 of these in the time that I've been here. Of which, you know, probably a hundred of them have survived and, you know, they're, they're just planted in the mix back in the woods and I, as I work back in there, I uncover the ones that have survived. Um, 
yeah, give it give it a shotgun approach. But you know, considering you've got such a valuable tree, such an attractive tree, a tree with you know such uh, traditions to it, and one that has such incredible values both for the soil, culture, and uh, and uh, you know the ecosystem too. I mean, it would be crazy not to give it a try. So please do. And they like biochar.